but every little movement that your dancers, you guys should be going step by step, move by move through every detail, defining that angle. Are we all hitting right here? Are some of our dancers having their arms here? Are some of them overextending? Because when you have a whole team together and there's those tiny little differences, that takes away from the overall picture, right? And you can have one person or two people that are off, but when you have your whole team that have different levels, that's like a trickle, uh, like a domino effect of, okay, now we're losing that visual. Are the dancers moving as one? So do they all look uniform in their movement too? Like, again, that's defining every little part of the style, making sure that if this dancer is doing it a little more hard hitting, this dancer is a little more flowy, we need to go over that section again and make sure that we all look the same. And even sometimes it's the pathway of arriving to that pose. So like if we're using that same pose example, like if somebody's like really low and in it and then they're like, and then somebody else is like, do you see how the arrival to that same pose is different? So that's so important. Yeah. Again, that's breaking down every little detail of the routine, right? Are athletic movements hitting on the same count and level? So again, that's just stating what we were stating. And that comes into like the tricking aspect too. Like if you're gonna perform a trick, don't make it one where we're like catching our breath, like, oh my gosh, did they almost die? Like we wanna see that athleticism, we wanna see that wow factor. And if you're gonna do multiple together, it's gonna have the most impact when they're executed uniformly. Absolutely. So now we get into creativity and variety. This is also worth 10 points on your sheet. So creativity is defining how unique and imaginative the movements are. And variety is the choreography repetitive or unpredictable. So are the pictures visual and the movements exciting, okay? Is the um, choreography, is it repetitive where you already know that you saw this eight count early in the routines, so you're gonna see it again? And you know what, that, that's a, um, a choreography technique it needs to be intentional though. It, do, it doesn't need to be that you're just trying to fill the space and you're like, what do I do here? Okay, well, let's just repeat it. If there's like a real reason for it and it makes sense in the choreography, that's one thing. Or if you're creating like a roll off and so you're repeating it, that's one thing. But if you're just trying to fill the space, now your judges and your audience are potentially losing interest, right? Right. And that comes into like how you actually choreograph the routine as well. Sometimes, especially when it comes to dance routines, especially maybe a routine that's hip hop versus something that's more technical like pop or jazz. It's so much choreography. But when you take those choreographic devices like Brooke just mentioned, like repetition as one, or adding level changes or a ripple, that can actually fill that space and help with creativity and variety because now you're not having to come up with a whole additional eight count, which led you to repeating something that you've already done. Instead, you made it more interesting visually by adding a level change and a ripple, and now you fill the time. Totally. Um, also, does the routine have a character or a theme, and do the moves align with that theme? So this is not necessary, but if you decide that you want to go with a routine character or a theme, then this is something we, that we've seen as well. Like we get so excited because say for example, you do, um, I, I think I showed a video last year where we had like a music conductor theme and this team, they did it right, okay? This, this team did it all the way. But just using the same example, say you decided for your hip hop routine you wanted to use like a, a music conductor theme and you start off and you have the costumes and you have the music that aligns with that and you have the movements that align with that. Make sure you carry that all the way through. Don't lose those movements that are um, amplifying that theme, don't lose those throughout the middle or the end of the routine. We wanna see that from start to finish, right? It needs to make sense all the way through. Um, same with the music. Don't have this music that's banging and it's exciting and it makes sense with a the theme for the first two songs and then you kind of just throw in whatever TikTok trend song is, is hype right then, you know? It all needs to flow seamlessly and make sense. The crowd is like not aware of your routine like you are it will be our first time as the judge is seeing it too. So what you want to think about is establish your theme immediately. Make it very clear and make it part of the very first section of the routine. Whether that's the song choice, the costuming, the moves, it should all be working together to establish that from the beginning. And then a good way to think about it too is that, and we'll talk about this more, but mm, since we open the door, uh, you know, every routine should have a flow, a beginning, a middle, and an end high points and low points. 
If it's hype the entire time, we're gonna be desensitized or feel like we need to like look away and take a breath. Like, you need to give moments where it gets hype and it's hitting hard and it's energizing and bouncing, and then boom. Wah, wah, boom, boom, bah, and it picks back up, right? <laughs> like, that's why we like music that vibes like that, because it tells a story and it gives us highs and lows. So if you are doing a theme, and say that's very specific moves to it, then make a bank of those moves and then say, okay, some in the beginning, some in the middle, and some in the end. And then figure out what your story's gonna be and then that will inform your process as you go through. That's a good point. And we're actually gonna watch um, a demonstration or a video of a routine uh, to kind of really bring that point home so you guys can see that, like, exactly like you said, it doesn't have to be hype music the whole time. It doesn't have to be low-key music the whole time. You can really intersperse those nicely, and they can be cohesive together, and it, it makes for a more um, engaging routine in that way. Because, like he said, exactly what he said, it's not in your face the whole time where you're like, ooh, chill. But it's also not like, okay, I'm falling asleep. Okay, So we'll see a really good example of how you can do that. Also, I just wanted to touch on real quick. Remember creativity and variety. We want to see those in um, not just the actual choreo, but in your transitions as well. Um, and we'll kind of get into that right here. But remember, you can you can all of these um, sections and all of these terms. They kind of need to interplay with each other throughout. So your next section is formations. This is worth ten points of the score sheet. This is always tricky for judges because this encompasses formation variety. It encompasses spacing, so formation variety is what the choreographer or the coach is putting into the routine, right? That's your job as a coach to tell the kids, this is the formation at this time, this is the formation at this time. That's your job as a coach. The kid's job is to have their spacing properly defined when they are performing, right? So you could have done your job as a coach and had beautiful formations, wonderful variety, but then your kids didn't translate that as well on stage. So those are some hard elements that, you know, we've had coaches come to us and be like, I had tons of formation changes and variety throughout the routine. Why didn't I score as well here? Well, you're right, you did, but your kid's spacing wasn't well defined, and so those formations were lost. You couldn't tell those pictures that they were trying to create. So you kind of have to modify their score there. You can think about this as like an incorporation score, almost more like yeah. the difficulty of having the multiple formations. The spacing is the execution of those defined formations, and then the transitions are a mixture of both. Yeah. Because it requires choreography to transition, unless you're performing a basic walking transition, <sighs> and it requires the execution of the dancing through those transitions. So it's a blending section here. Absolutely. And that's another point that I'd like to touch on, is that transitions are so important to your overall routine. Transitions are what make the pace and flow seamless, right? So you, you don't want to um, you don't want to be in the middle of one section and then you stop and you change formations for a whole eight count and now it's your next style, your next session, and then you stop and you change formations for two eight counts. That creates real choppiness in your routine, right? So the transitions are what are going to make that routine flow. We, and I feel like this is kind of a section that's forgotten a lot of times. That is so important because that adds to your routine flow, um, it adds to the pace, right? And it also adds to the pictures. Use um, differences of counts in your transitions. So sometimes use a full eight count if you want to. Sometimes use a four count. Sometimes use a two count. Transitions don't always have to be big, right? Uh, formation changes don't always have to be big. You don't always have to have this dancer on this side of the routine going all the way over to this side of the routine. And oftentimes, that, that isn't effective for you because you're making that dancer haul their little booty all the way across, they're having to run, it's not as clean and dynamic. So instead, think about, I'm gonna use a two count here, have this dancer move over just a bit, and this dancer in. Then I'm gonna use a four count and have them switch over. So really change up those counts of your transitions because that helps keep your routine interesting as well. And they should always be intentional. Right, like we're talking about building a story from beginning, middle to end. So the transition, it's like if you were reading a story to your child, would you be like, Goldilocks, bear, big bear, bed, soft bed, 
No, like that would not be a good story. You need the transitions to make the story flow and be told, like Brooke just said. So it needs to be intentional. There, it's a bridging, a purposeful bridge. And really and truly, like if you if you were really stuck and you needed little Sally from all the way over here to here, well then she'd be able to be able to do a cool trick across. You know? Otherwise, you know, figure it out and change your need for that, right? We're gonna have time for questions at the end too, because I see a couple of hands jumping up, so. We'll get through the whole presentation. If you have a question, write it down or take a note so that we can answer it at the end. And we, um, I'm gonna also bring my demos up again. Um, this time they're gonna perform a little tutting section. So our dancers that are in the tutting. Um, and I'm going to, we're gonna touch on a few things with this. I wanted to touch on um, first how your formations are so important to the visual. So, we're first going to perform this. Let me move my little table again. So we're first going to perform this. We can't spread as, as much as we wanted to because of our room constraints. But this is an example of how powerful your formations can be to either enhance your visuals or to lose the visuals. So on something, for example, like a tutting section, we see this incorporated in, into a hip-hop routine often, right? This is a great... Um, choreography style to incorporate into your hip hop routine. If your team does it well, that's great. But you also have to remember that you lose that visual power when you have your team spread so far because tutting is made to be intricate, small, intricate moves that make a big picture. So I'm gonna stop talking, I'll show you the tutting section wide and then we'll change the formation a bit and show you how much more visual it is. Da, 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 da. When I pop up, that feeling is just a little bit like drop. If you say four words, I'm not nervous, I'm not nervous, I'm not nervous, I'm not nervous. Perfect. Okay, so obviously, these dancers are great. The choreography looks great. But they're not really creating a picture when they're far away, okay? It just looks like they're just dancing. So we're going to bring them in tight. If I had a bigger team, I would probably be doing some levels. A lot of times you see teams that, they, and they do have levels, but a lot of times you see teams that might do like a thigh stand here, or having all of those, the different elevation is really gonna create different pictures, right? You can also utilize different angles. If you have like a V type of formation, you can have the outsides going one way, the insides going one way. You can have the outsides all up while the insides are all down. So think of those ways, little uh, minor adjustments that you can really enhance the visuals of the choreography you already have. So let's try this one more time. Give it up for our dancers. The thing about hip hop is that it continues to evolve every year, right? Like there's styles last year that just popped up that no one has even seen before, no one has even thought of, and then we see them be, um, evolving and becoming more of a trend, then it gets a name and it becomes an actual legitimate style. So that's one of the blessings of hip hop is that it is so broad and it gives you so much to pull from, but as a judge it becomes a challenge, and even as a choreographer it can become a challenge because we basically are taking dance, which is an art form, and as judges or as coaches that are competing with a dance routine, now we're trying to quantify these elements, right? And so you can have teams that compete in the same hip hop category, and it's those routines are like comparing apples and oranges because hip hop is so broad. So on one hand, that can be really beneficial to you guys, but as a judge, it's very difficult to be able to see those two different routines and have to judge them um, critically against each other. So today we're gonna to talk about the things as a coach, the things that you guys can control, because you can't control what a judge's preference is, right? Like, if a judge prefers this style of hip hop dance over this, that's out of your, your control. But there's lots of elements on the score sheet that you guys can control, and we wanna empower you guys to be able to control those. So, looking at our score sheet, we're gonna start at the top, and the first um, element that we are looking at is overall impression and execution. This is worth five points of your score sheet. And I'm also going to go into where, like I said yesterday in Palm, but where the bread and butter of the score sheet is. So that's, we're really going to dive into those sections of where the bulk of the points are. But I'm going to also highlight all of the um, 
other elements. So overall impression and execution is worth five points. This accounts for looking at your team's energy, emotion, confidence, and overall crowd appeal. So let's break that down. Energy, do the dancers possess stamina? Can they get through the routine without looking winded? Or can they get through the entire routine? A lot of times we see that they start off really strong and then their energy just plummets by the end and they, they look like they can't hang, right? Do they start and end just as powerfully? We're also looking at the quality of movement. Are they placing the moves rather than powerfully performing them with um, power, with uh, being dynamic, with like that actual oomph behind it, or are they kind of just going through the movements? Overall impression also looks at confidence. That includes stage presence, authentic smiles, looking up, genuine facials that match the energy of the, the music, and confidence also comes for your dancers from knowing the routine like the back of their hands. So the more they practice, the more they can commit that routine to memory. Now they're not gonna have to think about those elements. As dancers, you guys probably know this already, and your kids will learn this, like if you have something so strong and it's called muscle memory, and I haven't danced actively in quite a long time, but I can still hear a song that I danced to from a routine 15 years ago, and it brings back that memory, and I can remember the choreo from it, right? That's that muscle memory. So if you can continually instill that into your kids, that's one less element that they don't have to think of when they're on stage. It's almost like automatic, okay? And that will give them confidence because then they can focus on all of the other things. And then you have crowd appeal. Was the crowd filling it or were they bored, okay? so. Again, that's something that, um, based on their energy and confidence, that also entices the crowd. That also brings them in. So we're going to do a little demo. I'm going to pull my friends up. And I'm going to, they're going to do a routine. And basically, the first time they do it, they're going to show you what it looks like so just, they know the routine, they know the choreo, but they're going to be going through the motions. Let me, give me one second. And I apologize, there, we don't have a lot of room up here, but you guys are still going to get the picture. So when we do go through this routine, you guys are going to see the difference between, actually, um, you guys got enough room. And then we'll go through it again, and we'll, sh we'll show you the difference that stage presence and confidence makes in a routine. throughout the routine, or are there some areas that lack synchronization? We already saw them demonstrate this routine in the two lines, right? Again, we use that oftentimes in choreo. There's a time and a place for it, that's great. I'm not saying not to use it, but utilize different formations to um, basically display all of those things that I was just saying. So let's see our dancers do it one more time. Walk up in the game, I be on my game. If it's competition, I protect the same. If it's competition, I protect the same. If it's competition, I protect the same. and how much this can elevate your score 
by just performing with confidence, performing with energy and power, and having that stage presence. So let's see it one more time. Walk up in the game, I'll be on my game. This is competition, I'll put them in shame. This is competition, I'll put them in shame. This is competition. Yeah, with the party. Party. <laughs> yeah, with the party. party. 